hey, we're at a home today doing a mold test, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to go over with you um, what mold testing is, uh, why we do it, when it's warranted, and when maybe it's not, uh, some facts and common misconceptions about mold, anything else that you might want to know. Um, so first of all, uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about mold. A lot of times people hear the word and they freak out. They think that if they have any mold at all in their house, they're gonna die or they're gonna get really, really sick. And more often than not, that's not true. Um, mold is everywhere. Uh, fungus, mold, uh, anything with a spore is, is always in the air, outside and inside. And um, every home over time will develop uh, some latent and concealed uh, mold. And you just hope that those are normal strains that aren't going to be too toxic. If you do have high levels of mold, um, oftentimes they're not fatal or they're not super toxic, uh, but they could cause some symptoms if you have some pretty bad upper respiratory issues like asthma, COPD, severe allergies, things like that. And everybody has a different level of sensitivity to mold. So, um, you know, you might have some lower levels and just be more prone to getting some symptoms from it. So anyway, um, this house we're at today, we're doing a mold test because it's a vacation home and the owners here uh, that are selling the house had previously had a hot water line that was supplying their washing machine break while they were gone and the house flooded. Uh, they had remediation work done by a professional company and um, all of that work hopefully was done well, but by the time we got here to do our home inspection, uh, everything was done and patched back up. So the renovation work was complete, and now the buyer of this house just wants to be absolutely sure that all of that remediation work was done successfully and that there aren't any high uh, levels or concerning types of mold left. And it's always a good idea if you had a known mold issue and you had remediation work done to get rid of it, that it was done successfully. So this is definitely a case where a mold test is warranted and the buyer was wise to order this done. Um, so what you see down here is called a bio pump. This is the pump that we use to do our mold testing. And this is collecting an air sample. So most of the time what we do is um, we set up the pump outside of the house first to take what's called a control sample. So this is the sample that's going to tell us what the normal amounts and types of mold in the area where the home is are. Um, and that's a control. So that's the baseline that we're gonna measure, well, that the lab is going to measure the inside samples that we collect against to see if the levels inside are the same or similar or if they're very different. And if they're different, if we have other types of mold than what we get out here with the control and um, higher levels, then that could indicate that there's a problem. So we're gonna take this control sample, um, these little aerosol canisters here, this one's just finishing up, ran it for 10 minutes. These come with uh, these little stickers on the top and bottom just to protect. So inside of here, there's a sticky film, this media to collect anything that is sucked in by that pump. And we do that at a rate of 15 liters per minute. We usually run each sample for 10 minutes. Now, if there is prevalent drywall dust around inside, we'll run it for a little shorter time uh, because we don't want to gunk that media up too much with other air particles. Um, but we can test a lot of things with one of these pumps. So we can collect um, all sorts of different fibers and dead skin cells, mold spores. Um, there's a lot, you know, pet dander, things like that. So um, now that this one's done, we're gonna go inside. We're gonna get our indoor samples. And this is just a, a one floor ranch house on a crawl space. We're just gonna get a couple of indoor samples, send those to the lab, and then we'll be able to tell the client if they have a mold problem or not. All right, so we're inside now, uh, we're in a kitchen. We've just completed the first indoor air sample. After this, we're gonna go to do a bedroom. We did run this sample for a little less time because there has been some reno work done around here and um, there's some drywall dust around. Uh, that work, by the way, looks like it was done very well. Uh, the contractor's here, he's, he's done great work with that. But again, we can't see anything that's concealed, so this is all just precautionary for the buyer. Now, I mentioned that we would go over some times that a mold test would be warranted. One of those cases is like this, 
where there was a previous known issue and remediation work and you want to make sure that it was done properly. Um, but any time that you have any concerning signs of water or moisture intrusion, that's a time that you might want to uh, consider having a mold test done. Or if you have any otherwise unexplained symptoms, um, you know, allergy type symptoms, if you don't really normally have bad allergies, you could have a mold issue. But mold needs uh, a damp and dark environment to thrive. So uh, controlling the water intrusion is always priority number one in eliminating a mold problem. You don't want to band-aid fix it and just treat a problem area. You want to treat the source, which is usually from outside. It could be from a leaking pipe inside the home, but more often than not, it's water infiltration from outside the home. Um, so that could be something as simple as getting good rain spouting put up, getting the grating positively sloped away. But um, yeah, uh, just some things to be on the lookout for. Uh, if you're concerned about mold, controlling water is priority number one. So now we're gonna go into a bedroom. Uh, there are no visible areas of mold in this house because all the work has been done. If there was, we would be testing in those areas. And if there were visible uh, areas on a wall surface or somewhere else, we could take what's called a swab sample or a grab sample of those areas as well to just see what kind of mold the visible stuff is. Um, the lab can determine that. So we're gonna go into the bedroom next. All right, so we're here in a bedroom now, the master bedroom, doing our last air sample. Um, again, ran this for a little shorter amount of time. I wanted to talk to you real quick about a couple of common areas uh, where you're more likely to find mold if you otherwise don't really have uh, an obvious issue somewhere else in the house. Um, so that would be vented crawl spaces, um, not crawl spaces that are sealed uh, nowadays with a product like closed cell spray foam and they're uh, made to be as air and watertight as possible, um, but they're vented so that uh, vapor laden air is allowed to freely come in and out of the crawl space. A lot of times uh, contractors will install bat insulation just because it's easier. Um, and then if there's nothing there to hold that in place, you'll start to see the insulation sag and get wet from condensation buildup over time and mold can easily form in those areas. Same thing with unfinished attic spaces. And if you watched our last video on a property we were at with inadequate uh, attic ventilation, then you saw exactly what I was talking about. So those two areas in particular are really prone to higher levels of mold because they allow uh, air with water and vapor to freely come into the space and temperature extremes can cause condensation and then that excess moisture can lead to mold growth. And those areas are also usually pretty dark. Again, we talked about uh, mold needing a dark, damp area to thrive. So uh, if you have a home with a crawl space that is vented um, or an unfinished attic or both, you definitely want to make sure to peek into those spaces from time to time and check them out. Make sure you don't have any signs of concerning mold because otherwise you normally wouldn't probably be in those spaces and you'd have no idea. Uh, if you do run into it, then hire a professional to come out and test. And um, if there is visible mold and you know quite a bit of it, you obviously want to get that remediated and uh, have a better job done of uh, making those areas you know, completely ventilated or as water and airtight as possible. All right, so that's about it for the mold test. Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the contractor who has done the renovation work here um, because he's done a really great job. And he's out of the Pittsburgh area. His name's Alan. He's with ASK Contracting and Home Remodeling. So if you're in that area or the surrounding area around Pittsburgh, uh, give him a call. I'm gonna include his information for his Facebook page and his phone number down in the description so you can get in touch with him if you need to. Uh, it's hard to come by uh, sometimes some really good and honest contractors. Uh, Alan seems like a great guy uh, and the work here has done, uh, it's been done very well. So yeah, uh, give him a call if you're in the area and you need any work. I uh, hope this video has been helpful.